Welcome back. This is the current topics and management uh, session. Today, we're talking about business plans and goals. Uh, and many academics, they usually talk about a, uh, a variety of different academic analysis, such as the SWOT analysis and the PESTEL analysis. We'll be talking about that. But as you can see in this slide, I have a bunch of nice blue writing here. So this bit.ly biz plans, that is an actual business plan presentation that I have. And we have the summary, the class PPT, which is the business plans and goals. I have been giving this presentation for Korea's uh, Seoul City Hall and the Ministry of Justice ever since I was the very first non-Korean to invest and register and operate a uh, an international non-Korean owned and operated business in the country. When I started, I had to break the laws to start. And then after I got registered illegally, fraudulently, I went back and I told the government what happened. And so I've been advising them ever since. And so the government knows that it is very beneficial. Almost all governments in the world know it's very beneficial to have many new startups because most employment in a country is from small startups. Most attention usually goes to the huge trillion dollar multinational corporations, but uh, they don't provide uh, all of the benefit. So having startups helps quite a lot. If you want to go through our PPT today, you can click one of these links. If you want to see a slightly different PPT that I give to the government and the incubators, you can see the other link here. And this is a video of me actually teaching it. So um, this should show me, hopefully not too scary once it starts up, giving the presentation. Um, so we're going to be talking about that fairly soon. Now to uh, get started, today we're going to be talking about business plans and the different types of academic analysis and the basis of a successful business plan. Um, and we'll also talk about your life planning because your planning and business planning overlap and they're quite similar. Um, with that in mind, I'd like to just ask people uh, if you're aware of the key to success with plans, whether it's a business plan or a life plan, the, the key I'm just going to tell you is a uh, written plan. And so I'm going to show you, if you click on this link, um, you should be able to see this is my online library. And uh, this is a business plan that I like a lot. And I share it with a lot of the entrepreneurs that are trying to start up. Um, and so page one, uh, we have the executive summary and you all need to know about that. I would like everyone today to take a short amount of time, especially in groups, to be able to think of a business, uh, whatever it is, whatever is the product or service, and try to give an executive summary. More specifically, I'd like you to try to get in a group and come up with words that would describe this within 30 seconds. For example, if you're at a bus stop or in an elevator going to the next floor, so this is called the elevator ad or the 30 second pitch. So try to think about what is needed. Obviously, in a limited amount of time, you need to be able to tell all of the main details about your business to attract the other person. And so if I just jump to the end, the most important detail is to overcome what you know and try to figure out what are the interests of that listener or your target person and try to talk about mutually beneficial details. Um, and then we keep going through a lot of different things, the ownership of the company, the uh, competitive analysis, the market analysis, the segmentation, um, the details about your implementation, your products, your competitive edge or competitive advantage, sales details, personnel details, financial plans, etc. And you can have a lot of extra stuff. So if you are going to be giving a business plan, you should have at least the executive summary 
and a lot of extra details like an appendix in a folder in case somebody asks you questions. So ideally you have a 30 second, very well practiced introduction and a maybe a two minute introduction, maybe a 10 minute introduction, and then you have a folder of lots of other details. And so here is an example, an executive summary, and uh, it talks about everything in addition to describing the uh, company and uh, all of the main details. It's also even talking about the financing. For example, this needs uh, an initial combination of investments and long-term financing of $515,000 to carry it forward beyond the first three years. And then we can also talk about the balance sheet network of uh, something in the third year, the second year, and the first, first year, even though you haven't started your business yet. So you should be able to estimate how much sales you can get. And then we go through and we'll talk about a lot of these details. So this is an example of a business plan. We can go through it at any time. I've given you the links to it. I'm going to come back and get into um, overall <laughs> planning. The uh, research shows a lot of people talk about businesses failing or plans failing, but um, more accurate research shows from actual financial numbers of uh, companies from, for example, the Canadian tax department, it shows provided you are serious, and that generally means you write things down and you invest in at least writing, as long as you write things down, the chances of you being successful are much, much higher than most people say. And I'm gonna quiz you about that later. But if we look at this, what this says is that whether it's your own life plan or business plan, you should write details about what you want to achieve, what are your goals for 10 to 20 years. And then after you have those goals, it's easiest to work backwards. I've talked about this a little bit in the past. I'm just going to go through it uh, briefly. If you plan for in 20 years, you want very specific SMART goals. So it's specific uh, for S, M, in a, as in SMART, S, M, A, R, T. So it's specific, measurable, uh, achievable, realistic, and time-based. This is the 20-year time-based. And then in half of that time, 10 years, you need half of that. And then in five years, half of the time, you need half the foundation to set that up. And then two and a half years, one year, six months, three months, one month, two months, two weeks, one week to today. And then we go through these details related to the highly effective people book. They talk about first things first, another book. It identifies Q4. You should identify weekly and daily activities that you're going to be doing and prioritize them so that you focus on the most important things which will get you your goals. And usually, because you're planning 20 years ahead, they're not urgent, but they're most important other than the next category over here would be an accident or a crisis. You need to take care of that, but you can't plan for that. So whatever you're thinking about, think about your steps to get closer to your goals who can help you, what activities can help you, how can you uh, get at least to those higher levels and maybe have those higher level people or activities pull you up to a higher floor. That's much easier than just hiking up each stair one by one. So if I expand on this Q4, we see that there's four squares basically divided by important at the top and not important at the bottom and not urgent over here on the right and urgent over here on the left, a lot of people might say that the important and urgent is the most important. That's where you should focus your time. And that's not true. This is stuff that you don't plan. And it's only a small accident that yes, you need to manage, but that's not what you plan to focus on. You should be planning to focus on as much of your time and energy as possible into this important, but not urgent. These are the long-term plans and uh, prevention of problems, value clarification, exercise, relationship building, etc. So if we, we go through that, here are some different examples. 
I like my art. Anybody else here like my art? Any idea why I'm using this picture? Uh, Do, can you guess what is the significance of having uh, this character here? Well, I think that's the anime animation character. Like, sure. I think I saw that like when I was young, but I don't know the exact reason. I'm sorry it, for it, that. It is a sheep. Maybe it's just English uh, culture, North American culture. We talk about sheep. Can anybody guess what is the significance of sheep and planning? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's a black sheep. So I think it's kind of a real member of a group or a family. It sure. Does... <laughs> okay, keep going. Did I hear Arthur or Vincent? Were you guys saying something too? Yeah, that, that was me. Go ahead. Uh, the meaning of sheep in European and Northern North American culture is like to follow people. Right. Most people follow whatever anybody else is doing in front of you. And they follow their mom and dad. It's just a, it's a thing of respect. And it's a, it's a comfortable, easy thing to do. But stand back and look at it. And if you see sheep, sheep will follow the, whatever the dog is pushing them into the barn where they get their heads chopped off. So before you walk into some area with a group of other people, make sure you're not going to be dying or having your head cut off. Maybe people will say you're a black sheep and you're strange if you don't follow them. And so that's why we're saying you're the black sheep, but it's better to be a rebel than to <laughs> go and follow other people into activities that don't make sense, if not hurt. Many, many, many people don't realize a lot of people get a job, work their whole life until they hope to retire at 65 years old. And then when they're 65, they realize they can't do those dreams they had. And so please think about that and start uh, and talking about it. We can talk about that quite a bit. The, uh, the next thing is this Q4 thing. As we see here, the First Things First book. If you go through this First Things First book, you realize that you could have dozens or hundreds or thousands of things to do each day or week. And most of them will be wasting your time, like checking your email or checking your phone every couple of seconds or um, talking to, to friends, answering uh, chats with friends. Those things may be popular to do and your friend might give you a headache if you don't answer quickly, but it's wasting your time. Research shows you get a lot more accomplished if you just check your email two or three times a day. Maybe at 9 a.m., check your email and text. And then again at uh, maybe 1 p.m. And then maybe again just before you go home. If you do it that way, you can get a lot more done. You're not distracted. You have better concentration and things. So if you list these hundreds or thousands of things, you can see that there's tasks to accomplish your dreams, that's most important. That's what you should focus on first. Then your daily important activities like play or sleep or eating or uh, studying or friends or partying, getting drunk, having sex, whatever. Those are all important. Nothing else is more important than that to plan on. Can anybody try to help argue? Anybody want to be a devil's advocate and talk to me about how I'm a bad sheep? What could be more important than these things? Everyone has their individual needs, I think. Okay, so what could be more important than what we're listing here? Eating and sleeping. That's here. Uh, sleeping is here, eating is here, even partying with friends is here. Why? Because you need food and drink to live, of course. You need sleep to live. You need to party and meet with your friends because that would balance out your, your social life and take some of the stress away. All of those things, you're not supposed to do it unplanned. You should be able to plan. Some people say, I need 15 minutes of this or one hour of this. Um, you can measure it down to the number of minutes you do. And I'm not joking. The more successful a person is, like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, the much more planned their life usually is. They will hire many people to help plan their minutes. Um, 
And so the alternative is something that's important and urgent. Those are usually accidents, like you're hit by a bus. Of course, you need to take care of that, but you don't plan for that. Um, and anything that is not important, you should learn to say no. Or if you can't say no, learn to say, okay, sure, I will help you as soon as you help me with this Q1 focus first. As soon as we get these limited things done, then I can help you with these other parties or, or activities. Um, and so this is uh, a new sort of topic. Many people usually gossip about how new businesses or, or plans usually fail. Well, yes, a lot of plans fail if they're not serious. The more serious your plan, starting with being able to write it down, if it's not written down, if you're not serious enough to write something, then you're definitely not serious about it at all. So if you write things down, the Canadian government shows 89.2% of all finance and insurance industry new startups survive longer than five years. All real estate operators and insurance agents, they survive longer than 88.6%. Um, they survive beyond, they're likely to survive beyond five years. Business services, etc. cetera. Even uh, fish farming, things like that. So the, the truth is, as long as you're serious and you have a written plan, you are likely to survive more than five years. Um, any comments about that? Usually that shocks a lot of people because people hear people saying plans fail all the time. Businesses fail all the time. Any comments about that? Uh, I'm not shocked about that because my father do his own uh, company and at first it's not working very well, but you do that during 15 years after you stop. So I'm not afraid and I'm sure every when you try and you try the best, you can, it can work during uh, over five years. Right. So yes, th these statistics are saying just the five years. So many people think people that plan, the plans immediately fail. Life changes second by second, day by day. So you can't plan for anything. That's the argument. However, if you do try to plan, especially if you plan these long-term 10, 20 year plans, regardless of what changes on a day-to-day -day basis, those 20 year plans are not really going to change. And so maybe the person that you need to contact to get to a higher level, maybe that person might change, but the idea of getting somebody at a higher level to help you up or doing some activity to get better and closer towards your dream, those activities remain the same. And so this is not an idea. This is not a guess. This is a, a fact. Um, this is the Canadian government uh, ministry of industry and statistics showing people are, are succeeding. Uh, and you yourself just said your father was successful at 10 to 20 years. So obviously he did something well. Um, Anybody else before we get into the My idea? Once said that if the business doesn't make any profit um, in two years, it will probably uh, not survive. So the the two time in it two years or five years, I think it's two the, years, right? The, these this research is based on five years. And if we actually specifically answer your question, uh, I need to go down to a lot of other slides, much farther down. Um, this is something that a lot of people, especially in Korea, overlook. You can see, I, I, I hope, can you see this? It doesn't look, can you guys see the, uh, the pie chart? Let me make sure. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you can see it. All right, yes. So uh, a lot of people, um, seem to forget that while you get excited about your business and you start developing it and you start marketing it and you start promoting it, that's just you. And most other people don't care about you. Most people only care about what that other person cares about. 
And so they don't know about you if you did not exist last year. If you didn't exist last year, you don't have other customers promoting you. You don't have uh, a lot of marketing or word of mouth to promote you. So the reality is you will not have a lot of sales usually, or at least you should plan not to have a lot of sales in your first year. You should plan that you have to pay to market and promote your, your details for at least that first year. And then in your second year, after a year of marketing, after a year of having some customers saying good things about you, eventually you will start to grow, but you're still not going to be incredibly profitable. You may have some sales, but you're still uh, spending a lot of money to, to pay the basic bills. And so there's not a lot of profit. However, after three years, this is more realistic. After three years, you should have enough marketing, enough customers to have people know about you and be able to carry on uh, regular operations. So for anybody that's talking about two years, it's uh, a little bit unrealistic to think you can compete with your competitors that may have existed for a hundred years when you had no product, no marketing, no activities last year. So two years is still kind of a, a stretch. Does that make sense? Hua? I think it's still early to, to say, but it, it, it depends on your product. It depends on your industry. Obviously, if you're going to be doing something like pharmaceuticals, uh, having chemists trying to do experiments and then develop the experiments into drugs and the drugs have to go through sometimes year, two year long testing, that will take much longer than two years. There's other products, maybe selling a hamburger or a sandwich. It's very basic. You don't need a lot of trial and error. You can start immediately. So it depends on your product and service, but overall, the, the research shows that most people survive beyond five years if they have a significant written plan. And uh, two years is just the beginning. I have seen many people, um, usually wealthy people, rich people, start a business because Friday night, they're talking to a friend and somebody gives them a, a great idea when they're drunk. And so Saturday morning, they'll invest a lot of money, millions of dollars to try to start this business. Obviously, if they're investing in just one day, they haven't done a lot of thorough research. And I've seen one person after I started my first business, another person started almost the exact same type of business trying to copy me because he saw I was successful. That guy was rich. He invested almost $1.7 million. And in seven days, he closed his business. He thought, because he's going to have these uh, great marketers and sexy people promoting him outside his business, he was going to have a lot of customers immediately. And when people didn't line up to be his customers, um, he was shocked. And then after not making big money within the first week, he closed his business. And I can tell you from my results, my first week, I was still doing construction. So I plan for those things. Um, let's get on to, to this again. Uh, what is a business plan? This is the definition from textbooks. It's basically saying it's a document that explains a business idea and how it will be carried out. It's a story of what the business is now and what it will be, for example, 10, 20 years later. It should have all of the costs in a marketing plan. It should have a description of your financing. It should have estimations of your earnings. Even though you never started, you should still be able to figure out how much you will earn after you start. And why? Because it saves time and money. It's, us it's not usual. It is always required to raise uh, financial uh, capital from banks, for example. You have to have a written plan to show a bank in order to get a loan. Usually investors also want that too. It serves as an operations guide. So here is the uh, simple uh, introduction, what I think is most important. The idea of what is uh, the main questions that should be discussed. Uh, I've already shown you a business plan. And to, to summarize all of it, I would say you should be a specialist in your area. 
Specialist means you know more about it than most other people. What that generally means is you can think of many questions with great answers easier or better than anybody else. Once you are able to ask 10 questions about something, in our group today, you should be able to ask uh, 10 questions about your product or service easily, but going on to 50 questions is very hard. 100 questions is crazy hard. Just the questions, not even the answers. Reasonable questions. And so here's some examples. Make sure you understand. You know the details, others do not. Write it down, discuss it, evaluate your understanding with potential uh, customers or uh, staff or investors. What exactly is your specialty? Whether it's a product or service, it's the same. There's probably competitors out there. How are you different than somebody else? Um, next, more specifically, why would a customer use your product or service and not the product or service that they've been using and that's been competing with you for the last 10 years. So you need to be able to convince somebody to stop doing what they have been doing for a long time and start to do something new with you. So uh, who specifically will use it? Uh, how will you create a competitive advantage? What is a competitive advantage? We'll talk about that soon. Uh, how will you operate? How much will you charge? Uh, a lot of people, um, depending on your culture, they would answer this differently. In North America, a lot of people typically say they charge as much as they can. However, the popular thing in East Asia is usually you charge as little as you can, provided that you have reasonable profit. So as long as you can pay for your expenses plus a small amount to grow, that is better and that's more of an east asian thing or an asian thing than a western thing any idea why what i'm saying is the new yorker would try to sell you a pen for ten dollars versus the person in asia would sell you a pen for 10 cents 10 cents versus ten dollars why the difference or 10 cents versus a thousand dollars any idea why I mean I mean, it's the reputation. Uh, you know? it, could, it could be, yes. If you are uh, an organization that everybody knows and you have built a brand of being famous quality, sure, you can charge a little more. I, I but, think... It... But there, just a second. There are famous organizations like Sony or famous organizations, even Huawei, that are... Uh, and, and Volvo, you guys know Volvo cars... That's the, supposed to be the most reliable, highest quality car, many people say, in the world. Safest car in the world. That is Chinese. Applied Materials is generally a company that makes almost every semiconductor computer chip in the world. And that has to be high quality. And their main research and development is in China. So how does that answer your question again related to the quality brand name? when we're, we're specifically asking why does the New Yorker charge a lot of money versus somebody in East Asia or Asia charging a much lower price? Who is the next person? Was that Angel or? or um, it was uh, me. Okay, go ahead. Uh, I thought you said it's East Asia. I thought it's total, you're saying, talking about Asia. I think that in Asia, there are many developing countries, not developed countries. Sure. So for this reason, the price is uh, lower. Okay, that, that's that's a very good point. Yes. Um, what is another point? Yeah, um, I think it also depends on the quality and materials are way um, expensive in New York rather than Asia, maybe. Well, a lot of materials quality... are used. Quality cannot are... usually be uh, pinned to New York. <laughs> Look, <don't... laughs> so uh, quality can be anywhere. And I was just giving some examples of the world's best quality is actually Chinese. So the what was the other point you were making? Um, I was saying the materials are usually. Um, much cheaper and in other ways more expensive. 
okay, things are more expensive, but that's kind of like a circle, right? The business charges yeah. more money because they want more profit and it's not related to the cost. It could be the exact same product, the exact same pen, but if it's sold in New York, it could be $10 versus if it's sold in China, it could be 10 cents. So the cost to make it could be generally the same if it's done by robots. Yes, staff are more expensive. Um, those are good points. Any other questions or, or, or yeah. suggestions? Um, I yes. Think it depends on the income level. So, for example, um, yes, 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 I was thinking about that. Yeah, a customer in in Asia might not be able to purchase a pen cost um ten dollar, but you know the income level in developing country is much lower. Uh, okay, um, what you're saying is right, but it's not um, related to the idea of a pen. If it takes Can one I? cent to make a pen, it doesn't matter how much your staff are paid. Uh, if they can make 10,000 pens every hour, um, if your staff is paid $1 an hour or $20 an hour. So yes, Arthur, you want to go ahead? Yeah, please. Uh, I think it's all about reliability. Reliability? Yeah. Um, we have like, uh, I'd say that Northern and West, Northern America and Western culture are like uh, reliable uh, projects and reliable uh, technologies that oh. have been. <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. No. Keep, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, what I mean is that um, the most known, I think, uh, technologies were first known by European and Western cultures. And like in the world, uh, I think, in my opinion, in the like East Asian culture, they were like Chinese people and Chinese technologies. They were like developing bad quality uh, projects. So that's in the past. So that's reliability, I think. Right. Um, your, um, your understanding, it is a true historical understanding that is outdated now. As we said, yeah, the yeah, sure, safest sure, sure. car and uh, the highest technology, safest technology nowadays. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. Right. So, okay, Gulcano, you had a comment? Yeah, I have another, another comment. So I think it's up to the cultural issues. For instance, Asians is long-term orientation and the, the West and the Europeans are short-term mostly. So I think it's up to the cultural Yes, it is. That's uh, one of the big things I'm going to be talking about next. The idea of the uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Thinking of your environment is huge. For example, in Asia, you're group-oriented. So you are looking at the group and you're part of a group. Even though it's one individual company yourself working, you're still usually part of a big group. And so you are helping the group. And so to help the group, if some family or somebody else in the group, if they can't live because you're too expensive, that's bad. So they give you a, uh, a product with a very small profit margin so that if you can be successful, you're going to buy more from them and you will be successful. So they think more of the other person in the group. If they are successful, they will pull me up. We get back to that idea of uh, this ladder. If you work with other people and the other people are successful and they can pull you up, you get a lot more benefits. So if we're talking about it again with the, the Western person, usually they're individualistic. They're just thinking, doesn't matter what other people think. If I can get somebody to pay $10 for the pen, jackpot, I'm lucky. Um, but... That is just looking for one sale at a time versus if you have uh, one cent profit or 10 cents profit and a million customers, that's if one customer goes bankrupt, you still have 999,000 other customers that could help you grow. So that is a huge cultural difference and you must decide how you're going to work with it. If you rely just on one person, for your business, super risky. If you 
rely on several different organizations to help you get successful. That's much safer. So that, that's a good concept. The other thing I want to be clear about with pricing, don't misunderstand. I'm not saying try to be the cheapest. Usually the cheapest can never win because somebody may be going out of business or selling their old supplies or trying to give them away. You can't make profit when somebody's just giving it away. So the idea of Walmart type of company, it's uh, the odds, the statistics show you're more likely to fail if you're trying to be the lowest cost. What Walmart is successful at is the same thing as Ikea. They are successful at logistics, being able to get products the cheapest and fastest way to the market, cheaper than anybody else. And so because they can do that, better than others. That's why they're winning. And it's just a bonus that it's the lowest cost. So um, be uh, aware of that. So another thing for, uh, I don't want to take too much of your time. I want to put you into group soon. I'm just going to go through uh, a few more things here, um, the academics, and then show you an example, and then I'll put you in the groups. Um, with this, you see that with the SWOT analysis, everybody's probably heard of it. The external is talking about the opportunities and the threats. Your internal uh, uh, environment is your strengths and weaknesses. Um, anybody can list these. And for any product, any service, you can think of these. However, a lot of MBAs and new businesses, they make a big problem. It's they think of one strength, one weakness, one opportunity, one threat, and then they manage those. Well, that's foolish because there's usually many, many, many strengths and many uh, weaknesses, many opportunities, many threats. Write them down, get them all listed, ask somebody else what could be another uh, threat and how could we manage it? And then go beyond that. If you do have a strength, how are you going to use your strengths to grow even more? Don't forget Pareto's law. You want to focus on 80% of your benefit comes from 20% of your activities. So keep focusing those benefits more and more so you're more of a specialist in those uh, strengths. And at the same time with the weaknesses, what are you going to do to overcome those weaknesses? Some people try to keep studying the weakness. Other people say, no, uh, you should focus on your strengths and maybe outsource your weaknesses to somebody that might better. So that idea of the SWOT analysis is, is one thing that we're thinking about. Um, another academic uh, analysis is PESTEL. The idea of political environment, the economic environment, social environment, technical environment, legal environment, environmental environment. All of these details generally must be analyzed. And if we look back, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, in my mind, it's the exact same thing. They're all the five W's. What are the five W's? Eloise, do you know what the five W's are? Anybody? I'll, I'll yeah. give you the hint. Uh, yes. Uh, is, uh, yes, it's uh, who, where, yes. what, what, when. Exactly. Uh, all the basic uh, questions that yeah. you learn as a baby. Who, what, where, when, why. Right, yeah. So as long as you think about these basic questions, you will do well. And you should go beyond basic questions, getting into 50 to 150 questions with reasonable answers. So a SWOT analysis and a PESTEL analysis are basically the same thing. Who, what, where, when, why? Start thinking about the details and start with the most important questions. Um, one of the important questions is... What makes you competitive? What is your competitive advantage? What are your competitive forces? And so that has been uh, researched and developed. And the most famous person for that is Michael Porter. Uh, he wrote in the Harvard Business Review 2008, there's five forces that shape your industry competition and your competitive advantage, your competitive forces. As you can see here, it's the idea of your... Um, the competitor rivalry, barriers to entry, threat of substitutes, supplier power, buyer power. So um, competitors, you it's probably pretty clear. Barriers to entry, what that means is 
like I said, with pharmaceuticals. With pharmaceuticals, you have to, or semiconductor equipment design and manufacture, most of those factories or fabs is what they're called, cost about a billion dollars to make. So if you don't have a billion dollars, that's very high barrier to entry. And then you need to invest a long time to design it. And then you need a long time to test it. And then you need even longer to market it. So it's a very huge barrier to entry, much higher than the low barrier, just selling spaghetti or sandwiches. Um, that's what we're talking with barriers to entry. Threat of substitutes, most entrepreneurs, many entrepreneurs, they fail to realize that what you think is new and unique, other people think is almost the same as something else. For example, air conditioning is competing with a fan. And it's also competing with uh, cold water or an ice cube in a drink or opening a window to get a breeze. Um, there's many different competitors. Uh, usually, if you think deeply and look deeply, you will see that there's many different competitors, regardless of what you're working at. So uh, I could go through and talk about what are some sales plan or some life planning. Overall, um, some people say just do whatever you love. I think that's foolish. You should make sure you love it and you have the skills for it or hire somebody that does have the skill for it and then make sure there's a market need. And uh, I think I talked to some of our, our group earlier. I believe the best business plan that most textbooks don't talk about don't involve you. The best business plan, in my opinion, is a system that will work by itself. Some people that I went through my first MBA with, uh, went through three, the, the, the first one, actually it was the second MBA, he made a business plan for class activity and he ended up presenting that to people that turned out to be investors almost by surprise and he ended up getting a lot of money to hire somebody else to manage his business and develop details. And, and he was able to sit back while the other people developed the business for him. So uh, think about those things. And so no matter what you're going to be doing, if you are going to be involved, it's a lot bigger investment. Make sure you know who you are. Uh, this is an activity that helps identify who you are. We've talked about this before. Write down a mind map. That means write your main interests and characteristics on a blank page, no job titles. Then after you've written down these things, flip the page over and ask other people, what career does this look like? So all of these, if you describe them, they look like some sort of career that should match your characteristics. If you are going to develop something and do the work in it, make sure that it aligns to you. This is uh, another idea. There's a lot of research that, that helps you identify your characteristics and abilities and jobs or careers that match you. You can go to humanmetrics.com or 16personalities.com. They're usually uh, short, easy questions that will tell you what you need to be successful. And so I'm uh, going to skip to um, this. This shows that it doesn't really matter how much work experience you have in order to be a successful entrepreneur. It does make a difference what type of company you worked for. If you work for the huge multinational companies, you probably have to specialize in something very, very specific. And so you are an expert in one thing and not able to do many, many things. While if you're working for a small company like this, the small business will have you doing everything, cleaning the, the floors, doing the marketing, doing the accounting, taking care of the stock and the inventory. Um, so those small business experience usually helps people start new businesses better than the large firm experience. Education, uh, also, it doesn't usually relate to success. As we know, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, they didn't have their university degrees and they became successful. So these are just some types of examples. Um, now I'm almost finished. I want to show you, these are some books. You should definitely go through them. You can go through this PPT anytime and see this. I have these books. You can talk to me about them. A lot of them you can download from the internet. Make sure for us as students, we're working wisely 
uh, on your business plan. So develop some sort of paper for your future job or your future business and look at the big idea of who could help you at the same time. Um, don't wait until you graduate. Start developing your specialization now. Um, and then if we keep going through it, we will see here are more details in a business plan to include. Uh, more business plans to uh, include. This is usually what investors or judges look at. How innovative is it? How feasible is it? What type of market potential do you have? Um, me, when I was doing a lot of this, I knew that one of my main customers was the government. And since the government was paying the bill, I understand the government is motivated by how much employment it provides. And so make sure you try to identify the top 20% of customers, what do they want? Some of them may be focused on employment or financial sustainability, entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, do you have that energy? Do you have that fire inside your belly or the spark, the energy to, to develop something? Are you motivated? Sometimes the motivation is, is most important. Um, and then present it, present it well so other people understand. Give an executive summary. Um, give your business idea description. So these are examples of what judges usually look at. Um, here's more details about feasibility analysis, what a business plan has. Uh, there's lots more details uh, I can go through. I'm not going to waste too much of your time unless you have questions. Uh, financial analysis, assets equals liabilities and owner's equity. Um, a lot of people forget this basic question. And uh, I, I want to kind of be, be clear about that and, and point it out. The idea that when you study accounting, they teach you there's only one way to, to do things. And you know that your, uh, your assets and liabilities and owner's equities, you think that's fixed. And you think your revenue and your cost of goods sold, your expenses, you think that's fixed. Well, that's not true. The only thing that's fixed is your revenue. Your expenses, depend on how much you want to pay. If you get a lot of revenue and you have uh, paid for your costs, you're going to have a lot of profit. But if you have a lot of profit at the end of the year, you have to pay a lot of expense in tax. And so smart entrepreneurs don't want to give their valuable money away so they can use that extra money to buy more of the uh, supplies for next year or hire more staff, or, or use that so you can say online that you don't have profit, which means you don't have to pay tax. Sometimes the, the taxes could be 30 or, or 50%, or sometimes more. Um, so don't forget that big picture. Um, let's get back to the idea of what are some possible business plans that you guys can present. I'd like you guys to start giving some. Um, there's, there's lots more I can talk about. For example, um, the idea of most cities will have an office designed to help you start a new business. And they'll give you a lot of statistics. Um, and as we talked about before, embassies. A lot of businesses forget that an embassy is your marketing office if you want to do international business. The old way of doing business, and I did this, I was doing this for 20 years, I would work for a North American company that wanted to do business in maybe a, a conference in Singapore. So they, they demanded I take the top five executives over to Singapore, go to this meeting, try to make the sales, and then come back. And I was saying, that's ridiculous. These top executives want first class, business class seats fancy hotels. We go there just for meeting with one, one person and then we come back. That's very high risk. If you use the embassy, the embassy can take your details, market it in any city you want around the world, identify potential customers and distributors or partners for you. And so you can have those lined up before you even go. And they can attend trade shows and promote your product all for free because that's what your tax dollars are doing. So if you use that, I was able to go the first time with several executives, cost $61,000. We hoped to get $600,000, but they actually got none. 
versus if we use the embassies, it costs $16,000, the reverse number, and we got $21 million in contracts. How that worked, we flew to an embassy in Japan, in Tokyo, and then an embassy in Seoul, an embassy in um, Beijing, another consulate in Shanghai. Uh, we went to Taiwan, we went to uh, Thailand, uh, we went to Singapore, the, the same type of conference meeting area that the company went to. And we had the embassy set up meetings in New Delhi, in Mumbai, in, in Chennai, in Jakarta. And all of that cost less than $16,000. But it was just me going, not a group of people, and it was economical. And the embassy staff set this up for you. So let's, now that we've got a bunch to, to think about, I'd like to put you into groups. And the purpose is to think of any possible new business. It can be a product or service, but I want to put you into a group to come up with the 30 second summary. How can you introduce it to get investment? If I'm going to invest in you, how much time do you want to prepare to give me your 30 second talk? So Gulcano, how much time do you want to have a group activity to have these group people help you think of a 30 second presentation, a 30 second talk? 10 minutes. You need 10 minutes, okay? Eloise, how much time do you think you need to be able to make a successful presentation? Uh, I don't know, but uh, 10 minutes, I think is a good thing. Okay, any other comments or suggestions before I divide you guys up? Um, Vincent, can you repeat? What is the task you're going to do? We need, we're going to be in a group during 10 minutes. And at the end, we need to present our project in 30 seconds to have some investment of your. Perfect. Uh, exactly. So let me um, try to get these breakout rooms set up for you guys. Several, a couple of you are now outside of the breakout rooms. Um, we, we had uh, 10 minutes assigned to work in a group in order to, to make your presentation. Are, are you guys ready to present everything? Uh, yes, uh, so there are some uh, technical issues. That's why we broke these things. So yes, uh, I think I... I think uh, uh, more digitalized is uh, is important and uh, it uh, it can helpful for us. Like uh, it, uh, there are so many examples. Like Amazon opened their business in India and they go their business. And uh, after one year later, Flipkart is an Indian company. They copied their idea and they also grow their business. So. I think uh, if we have a better idea, and if uh, people uh, like uh, ideas, then uh, online marketing is one of the best uh, best things uh, that uh, it uh, it can be grow rapidly uh, if we have good ideas. Okay. Um... So we are almost ready to hear from uh, everybody. The breakout rooms, I believe, are now finished. Let's just check if, um, yes, all participants, I believe, are uh, out of the, the breakout room. So do we have any volunteers to start giving your 30 second spiel? And when we go through that, uh, again, here are some examples of things that judges may look at. Um, this is, maybe I can... Uh, so, is it innovative enough? Is it feasible? Uh, is there a significant potential? Um, financially profitable? Uh, those type of details are important to be looking at. So, with that said, any volunteers? 
Jessica, is that you putting your hand up? Do you want to be the first one to present? <laughs> I see your hand kind of going up. <laughs> uh, or uh, Fahim Malik, are you the, the first one? Would you like to present? Who wants to volunteer to present your 30 second spiel? I can present if you want. Great. As usual. So can I start? Yes, go ahead. Okay, hi everyone. I'm gonna tell you about our product, which is this a uh, beautiful earphones, uh, which are very very comfortable and gives a great gaming experience. Not only gaming experience, they also got very good quality. Uh, it is, it works with Bluetooth. It connects to you with Bluetooth. If it runs out of battery, you can use it with us. But it's battery uh, lasts for three days, so you won't need anything um, to use it. <laughs> uh, I don't have the time. Okay. Um, thanks for that. Everybody in the class, please write down notes if you are like me and your memory only remembers a, a few things. So write down some notes um, so that we can chat about this afterwards. Who is the next person to try <laughs> just to keep things within 30 seconds? No other volunteers. So which group were you in, uh, Angel? Um, group number one. Okay, so who is in group number two? Can group number four go next? Sure. Uh, which student in the group will be able to present? I'd like to hear a... a uh, oh, can, can you find a, a student to present? Who? Yes, Andron. Oh, Great. Uh, yeah, that, that's me. <laughs> uh, so first, uh, I think I want to work uh, for a big company and uh, make some uh, programs uh, for education uh, in association with our French state. Is what we see, and the problem in France is that the programs have been made decades and decades ago, and the main topics are not even interesting for students, and they don't really appreciate it, and they say it every year and every year, and the teacher don't make any um, any changements because they say lock it. So I think it might be really interesting to just make some new type of uh, activities and new type of classes in order to get it really more uh, involving for students for middle and high school. Um, oh, okay, actually, any idea how long we took there? I was very blunt. A minute. Angel. That was a minute, right? So <laughs> we, we took twice as much time there to talk about things. Uh, it was more than a minute. Right. So we took twice as much time as Angel uh, speaking. But... I got timer. Yes. Okay. Go ahead, Angel. Can you uh, select the the person in group three that's going to be able to present, and you can tell them <laughs> when to uh, close the elevator door. Who is group three? Okay. My timer is ready. Both group two and group three, we're waiting for you guys. Yes. Hello. Hello. I, I can hear you. Yeah. Uh, which yes. group are you in? I'm from a group three. Group three, okay. So uh, I think uh, digital marketing is uh, good things for us. It saves our time. We can do anything uh, from online. We don't. Uh, we can't. We don't have to do uh, physically. So I think uh, these things are good. Uh, so in future we can uh, carry out uh, from these things, and we can do uh, something better. Like time uh, is up. Time is okay. up. <laughs> Good. And the last group is group two.
Who was in group two? Okay, I can explain, but uh, I'm not the better for that. <laughs> if another guy of group wants. Go ahead. No. So far, I, I don't know anybody else that was in group group two. Okay. Talking. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, uh, for our business, we want to sell uh, sneakers uh, in Korea for not uh, in a, um, in a, a shop with a, a luxe, uh, luxe shoes, uh, very famous shoes and very uh, a little uh, part of the sell shoes. <laughs> I can't explain, sorry. So uh, we want to sell with an online shop uh, very uh, famous shoes uh, for. Uh, uh, I am people. sorry. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so complicated for 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Right. So uh, everybody now sees that 30 seconds is really hard to manage. And so um, let me go back and share part of my screen. Um, the idea that when you are developing that idea of uh, life, everybody is um, using the same amount of time. You have 168 hours per week. Generally, 35 hours are working or studying, 56 hours if you're sleeping, lots. Uh, and that leaves twice as much time as a full-time job still free. So you have two full-time jobs worth of time to develop something new that currently most people are wasting. And 77 free hours is 4,600 minutes, 277,000 seconds free. So uh, learn the importance of time and how to use it. Even 30 seconds, it, it, the idea of having Bill Gates on the elevator with you could change your life, right? So um, what are your comments? Which groups, um, Arthur, which group were you in? I was in group two. Sir. So you're in group two. Uh, gr sorry, sorry, group three. Group three. Uh, okay. And can you tell me uh, what do you remember about group one? Uh, I think that was the earphones, the headphones. Okay, and so um, what do you remember about it other than just the earphones? Uh, what, from what I heard, that was like uh, gaming earphones, like that have uh, comfort and a good uh, quality of sound. Would you invest in that or the digital marketing or? Uh, for for only what I heard, I'd say that they are pretty common, so I, I won't invest in that. Okay. So I, think, I, I think that was because of time, time liking, that, that's only of, is because of that. Okay. Um, how about, um, I don't think I heard from Laura, uh, you, you didn't do the talking, so you can do the investing. Laura wasn't in class today. Sorry, uh, Jessica. Um, so I think I understood the first group best, but I'm also in the first group, so I knew more about it, uh, about the backgrounds. So I think it was pretty fast and to the point. So I like that. Oh, okay, so uh, what other group do you remember and what was good about them or bad about them? Um, for example, the idea, idea with the shoes, I think it could have been pretty interesting, but like, um, if I would have known more about it, it was a bit, um, yeah, too short the time to get all of it. So you like the, the shoes, but you still don't have enough time to invest. Um, yeah. anybody else? Good kind of, what other group other than yours do you think uh, was the most impressive to you? Oh, the online marketing. I cannot understand completely, 
but uh, something relating to the di digital and online. Uh, any idea how that organization is different than any other marketing organization? No. So it's the exact same as, as any other organization. Uh, even the, uh, uh, Angel, you were the specialist in the earphones. Do you remember what made the digital marketing company unique from other marketing companies? Or do you know what made the, the shoes different than the others? Or do you know what any of the other business presentations, how they were different than other competitors? I don't think any of us achieved the goal in 30 seconds, including myself. Because I don't remember other groups saying something about their um, organization. So if I were in there, I would absolutely forget about what they said. Because I, I can't remember it now. <laughs> okay. So everything that everybody just said would be forgotten. Um, please think about that. Again, we all have the 77 hours free that you could be promoting yourself, an extra business, a hobby, uh, an extra income stream. Start thinking about the importance of time, how you have 277,200 seconds free to be used for almost anything that you think is important each week. And um, start to use those wisely. Class time is finished. Uh, thank you very much for, for joining again today.